SpaceX is ready with its latest updates at the launch site. With preparations for static fire testing reaching its peak, a tempting speculation has emerged regarding a cutting-edge two-stage water deluge system. There are also activities at the orbital launch mount where remarkable advancements have taken place. There is also updates regarding the construction of a manifold dedicated to the storage and supply of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen tanks. What astonishing developments are unfolding at the launch site? Dive into this video to find out. At the suborbital launch pad, preparations are underway for the highly anticipated static fire testing of Ship 25. While there were initially scheduled closures for Ship 4 testing throughout the week, it appears that the closures for Monday and Tuesday have been cancelled, raising the possibility of the static fire test taking place on Wednesday. With previous cryo tests conducted at the Massey site for Ship 25, it is likely that the test will proceed without the need for additional cryo testing. Signs of final preparations are evident at the suborbital pad, as the crane that had been attached to the ship for an extended period has now been detached. This indicates that the team is ready to proceed with the upcoming static fire test, bringing us closer to witnessing this thrilling event. Notable changes have been observed in the area, including the construction of a small retaining wall likely built within the past week. While there isn't much activity currently taking place at the suborbital site, intriguing unidentified structures have caught attention. However, their purpose remains unclear, and it is expected that their significance will become apparent once power lines are installed and utilized in this area. Visual evidence reveals that the crane is no longer connected to the ship, confirming its readiness for static fire testing. The switch or alteration in the conduit path at this location remains uncertain, and further investigation is needed to understand the reason behind it. Looking back to the site's development in 2015, it is worth noting that a large dirt pile was previously built up in this area to press out water. While the exact location is hard to recall, the subsoils in this section seem to differ significantly from those just 20 meters away. This inconsistency is not uncommon when encountering different subsoil conditions during construction. The variations in soil composition might have necessitated distinct testing borings, resulting in the observed differences. As work progresses, speculation arises about the potential size of the tanks present in the area. It is possible that the tanks here will be larger than expected given the selection process for the footings. The significant amount of violence involved in the tank construction process highlights the scale and complexity of the project. As construction advances, attention is drawn to the upcoming pile cap installation. This process will require digging out a substantial amount of dirt and subsequently placing the pile cap beneath it. It is anticipated that this stage will provide a clearer view of the number of pile caps present in the area, making it essential to conduct another flyover to capture this crucial development. Moving east toward the tank farm, extensive work is being carried out in preparation for tank extension. As the tanks are extended further down, specific adjustments must be made for liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen-related equipment. A manifold system is being constructed to facilitate the filling of tanks in this area. Various manifolds, such as a double T-shaped structure, have been observed, raising questions about their purpose. The crowded and bustling area makes it challenging to keep track of all the equipment being brought in and installed. One item identified is a potential water pump or heat exchanger, possibly related to the fluids bunker. In terms of repairs, the company responsible for building the outer shells of the tanks, Sanchez, has returned with their equipment. Two containers stacked double high at the Sanchez site indicate their involvement, and it is speculated that they might be addressing the dents present on the tanks. With each passing day, the progress at the suborbital launch pad becomes more tangible, it is a testimony to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of innovation. From the repair of dents to the installation of manifolds and the mounting of additional water tanks, every step brings us closer to the grand unveiling of a remarkable achievement. Significant progress is being made in the construction of the tank farm area, where crucial equipment and pipelines are being installed to support the project. One particular tank has caught our attention due to the extensive damage it has undergone, evident from the numerous puncture marks it bears. Among all the tanks, this one seems to have suffered the most, raising questions about its history and impact on the project's timeline. Taking an aerial view, we can witness ongoing work in the tank farm area. The installation of a new pipeline is underway, involving excavation and extension through the ground. 
The presence of an underground channel further suggests the scale and complexity of the preparations being made. This pipeline appears to be an integral part of the manifold system that will extend to that specific area, serving a vital purpose in the overall functioning of the tanks. These developments highlight the attention to detail and precision involved in the construction of the tank farm area. Each component and pipeline is carefully planned and executed to ensure optimal performance during static fire testing and beyond. The significance of these preparations cannot be understated as they form the backbone of the entire system. In addition to the pipeline installation, extensive fabrication work is being carried out on the water pipes brought in for the project. These pipes, which were initially worked on at the Sanchez site, have now been transported to the tank farm area. This influx of pipes indicates the magnitude of the water system being established and reinforces the expectations of a large-scale operation. The introduction of multiple pipes and the ongoing fabrication work reveal the intricate nature of the system being constructed. The sheer volume of water pipes present in the area suggests the implementation of a comprehensive water distribution network. While the exact purpose and configuration of the system remain speculative, the scale and complexity of the setup hint at the possibility of a two-stage water deluge system. Speculation arises concerning the function of the additional water tanks currently being mounted in the tank farm area. These large tanks, which have been strategically positioned on cradles, indicate their imminent integration into the overall system. With the addition of these two water tanks, the question of a two-stage water system gains traction. While the specific volume and operation of the system are unknown, the presence of these tanks adds further weight to the speculation. A two-stage water deluge system typically involves different stages of water usage before and after launch. It is a possibility that the tanks and pipelines being installed in the tank farm area serve as the primary stage of water distribution. However, the purpose and configuration of a potential second stage remain elusive. Detailed observations and analysis of the ongoing construction may provide more insights into this intriguing aspect of the project. Interestingly, a set of gas canisters of different sizes has also arrived at the site. The reason for their varying sizes is yet to be determined. It is possible that these barrels serve different purposes or contain different gases, adding another layer of complexity to the overall system. One notable development is the presence of a manifold on top of the tanks, indicating a connection between the barrel and the tanks. This suggests that the barrels might play a role in filling the tanks. Furthermore, it raises the possibility of multiple banks of canisters being involved in the process. While two tanks have been observed, there are actually three mounting positions, with three mounts on each side. The location of the third tank remains uncertain. It is speculated that it could be positioned on a boat or originate from a different source yet to be revealed. The unexpected usage of the tanks for this purpose has surprised observers, indicating that further surprises may lie ahead. Connecting all the canisters and delivering the gas to the tanks is expected to require an extensive manifold system. The complexity of this task becomes apparent when considering the outlets on the canisters and the need to connect them together. It is anticipated that at least one more manifold will be necessary, and there may even be a third manifold considering the presence of additional canisters on the ground. There have been reports of black canisters that were present previously, but have since disappeared. The exact role and location of these canisters remain uncertain, adding an air of mystery to the unfolding preparations. The mounting brackets on the tanks provide further clues. Despite not being visible in the available images, their significance cannot be ignored. The mounting brackets suggest the need for a complex manifold system to connect the canisters and deliver the gas to the tanks. Considering the numerous canisters on site, it is highly likely that there will be at least two manifolds, if not more, to manage the distribution of gas. While the exact arrangement of the canisters and tanks is still uncertain, it is worth noting the presence of additional black canisters. Reports suggest that there were equal numbers of these canisters at one point, but some have disappeared. This disappearance adds another layer of mystery and speculation to the ongoing developments. Now, moving towards the orbital launch mount, in a recent development, significant progress has been made on the construction of the lining layer for a new project. The initial step involves the placement of a small concrete pad, which serves as the foundation for the subsequent work. To achieve this, the vaults are cropped down to match the height of the blinding layer, allowing for seamless integration with the reinforcing bars. Although only part of the blinding layer has been completed, there is still considerable work to be done. 
The construction team must extend their efforts both horizontally and vertically, covering a substantial area beneath the project site. It remains unclear how much progress has been made in these areas at the present moment. Furthermore, attention has been focused on a specific location where a line of sheet islands piles has been installed. The team has began digging the surrounding area, which was previously a terrace. This digging is in preparation for further work and highlights the magnitude of the concrete requirements for the project. In fact, it is anticipated that the amount of concrete needed for this stage will surpass that used for the base of the Mega Bay, making it a significant undertaking. Moving along the perimeter, the presence of sheet piling is noticeable. While most of the sheet piling avoid the channel area, there is some confusion regarding a particular section. It is speculated that the concrete will not reach the top wall of this section, but instead, it will likely stop at the level of the adjacent dirt. The excess will then be removed once this phase is completed. Interestingly, sheet piling has been installed around the channel to provide protection, suggesting the importance of safeguarding this element. It is unclear if this measure primarily serves as a base pan for the future work or solely focuses on the culvert's preservation. Delving deeper into the construction process, significant effort is being devoted to dealing with the framework and underground conduit. An excavator was observed working diligently, reaching down to the limits of its boom and excavating the area bucket by bucket. The extensive support provided for the concrete conduit box is also noteworthy. It appears to be temporary, ensuring stability until the structure is reinforced with concrete. Undoubtedly, this project entails a huge undertaking, as indicated by the details and labor involved. As the construction progresses, attention turns to the second stage, which is speculated to involve the top of the launch mount. However, preparations for this stage have not been visibly observed. Interestingly, reports have emerged regarding the installation of a second horizontal pipe around the bottom of the OLM platform. This additional pipe has been under construction for several weeks and can be observed in various locations. Despite the progress, some leftovers of the old Raptor collection line remain in place, surprising onlookers. Additionally, the location of the flex hoses for the water system is challenging to discern due to the presence of scaffolding. Alternative angles and perspectives may provide a clearer view of these components. In the latest update on the ongoing construction of Booster 9 at the SpaceX launch site, significant progress has been observed. Aerial shots reveal the replacement of the flex hoses with solid pipework, indicating a shift towards more permanent infrastructure. While some clamps are yet to be replaced, the presence of Raptor QDs adorned with tape on the edges signals further advancements. The discussion turns to a staircase and a stainless steel pipe located behind it. These additions seem to be part of the evolving infrastructure. The stainless steel pipe appears to connect to the front of a QD, while the black pipe nearby draws attention as well. The on-site observers speculate that the initial flex hose was a temporary solution to fulfill immediate requirements. The introduction of durable pipework raises questions about potential shielding additions and the staircase's permanence. Modifications to the external structure, including the installation of a covering box, may be necessary. While progress is evident, some elements, such as the replacement of the flex hoses at the rear and those inside the launch mount, are yet to be observed. Nevertheless, the overall pace of construction is noteworthy. The scale of the undertaking is immense, and the rapid advancements are impressive. The speed at which the construction is progressing surpasses expectations although it falls short of the ambitious timeline set by the project. As attention shifts to the surrounding area, changes in the landscape become apparent. Terracing can be seen on the left side, created to prevent soil collapse. The terrace sections will now be excavated, resembling a mining operation. Continuous developments on the ground are so rapid that even a subsequent flyover would likely reveal further alterations. In addition, a metal section on the upper right-hand corner of the site draws attention, this installed component plays a role in connecting the corner towards the raptors on the Ulm Olit. Further details about its purpose and function remain elusive. As we delve into the details, it becomes clear that the project is well underway and steadily advancing towards completion. Our attention now is drawn to the left side of the site, where the foundation for a new structure is being laid. A closer look reveals the pouring of concrete and the installation of steel reinforcement, showcasing the early stages of construction. This progress is indicative of the project's forward momentum. Moving towards the center of the site, new equipment has been brought in, suggesting preparations for major construction activities. 
While the exact nature of this equipment remains uncertain, its arrival signifies a significant step forward in the project's timeline. Excitement grows as these new developments unfold before our eyes. Notably, landscaping work has begun along the perimeter of the site. Trees and shrubs have been planted, lending a more polished and aesthetically pleasing appearance to the surroundings. This attention to detail demonstrates a commitment to both functionality and visual appeal, further enhancing the project's overall quality. Another captivating change is the transformation in the color scheme of the buildings. A fresh coat of paint has been applied, releasing a modern and vibrant ambience. This intentional choice adds a touch of visual interest and revitalizes the site, capturing the observer's attention. A closer examination reveals the emergence of the framework for several new buildings. The sturdy steel beams have been positioned, outlining the skeletal structure that will soon give way to fully realized structure. Witnessing the transformation from an empty plot of land to a bustling construction site is truly awe-inspiring. In addition to the structural progress, the installation of large windows on some of the buildings is worth noting. This design choice aims to create open and luminous interiors, infusing the project with a sense of spaciousness and modernity. These windows not only serve a functional purpose, but also contribute to the overall aesthetic appeal of the development. Moreover, infrastructure development is also well underway, as evidenced by the sight of workers laying underground pipes and cables. This crucial step ensures the seamless integration of utilities within the completed buildings. The attention given to this aspect emphasizes the project's commitment to functionality and convenience for future occupants. Overall, the construction site has experienced remarkable advancements, showcasing the steady progress being made. That was all the updates for launch site for today. Up next, SpaceX launches 53 Starlink satellites early Monday. SpaceX is set to launch a significant batch of Starlink Internet satellites into orbit on Monday morning. The launch, scheduled for 3.10 a.m. from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, will involve a Falcon 9 rocket carrying 53 Starlink spacecraft. The Falcon 9's first stage is expected to return to Earth approximately 8.5 minutes after liftoff. Its planned destination is the SpaceX drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which will be positioned in the Atlantic Ocean. This booster has an impressive track record, having successfully completed eight previous launches and landings, making this its ninth mission. Once the first stage has completed its return, the rocket's upper stage will continue its journey, carrying the 53 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Approximately 65 minutes after liftoff, the satellites will be deployed there. The total number of Starlink satellites launched by SpaceX thus far exceeds 4,500, with nearly 4,200 currently operational. These figures were provided by astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell. Despite these impressive numbers, the Starlink mega constellation remains a work in progress. SpaceX has the authorization to deploy a staggering 12,000 broadband satellites, and they have also applied for approval to add another 30,000 satellites on top of that. This indicates the company's ambitious plans for expanding global internet coverage. Notably, the Starlink launch scheduled for early Monday morning is just the first part of a planned Falcon 9 doubleheader. Later in the day, at 5.19 p.m., SpaceX intends to launch the Transporter 8 rideshare mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The second launch will carry 72 satellites for various customers. These back-to-back -back launches showcase SpaceX's commitment to increasing satellite deployments and improving its satellite internet services. As the Starlink mega constellation continues to grow, the company aims to revolutionize global connectivity by providing high-speed internet access to even the most remote corners of the Earth. That was all the space news for today. What are your thoughts on this water deluge system? Share your views in the comment section below. And if you want to see more interesting videos, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications enabled so you don't miss out on the latest news on space.